Like many of you, I woke up to insane news today, like World War III level news because a Russian made rocket blew up in Poland and killed two people, which is horrifying and scary. But Poland's also a NATO allied country, which should set off Article 5 of NATO, which I didn't even know there were five articles. And the fifth one's the scary one. That means you retaliate if, if any of your friends are hit, which means which means we would have to hit Russia, which which is which is they then they hit us back. So that's 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 terrifying. And then I also found out that Taylor Swift fans are terrifying because they're going to take down the Monopoly Ticketmaster, which they, they're powerful. They're scary. They, they were so mad that they couldn't get tickets. My girlfriend yelled for like 20 seconds. But those aren't the things that I want to talk about today. They're a little too serious or terrifying. Instead, I wanted to talk about a question that's been bugging me for months now. How does it all affect LeBron James' legacy? And that's what we're here to find out about today because it's been all over my TikTok for you page. LeBron James might be the biggest liar in America. It might be the biggest liar in the world. I have seen clips that have horrified me, and I'm here today to share them with you. Now, this first one might seem innocuous to some, but but really dig deep here. I had one coach, um, and he used to say, "Put yourself in situations where you're not in, you're not comfortable." Oh Play yeah, that's my favorite saying. Zone. That's um, my favorite saying. No shot. That's your favorite saying, LeBron James, because he didn't even say it like well. He butchered it. That's basically seek discomfort. I, I mean, maybe you're a yes theory fan and you're just going along with it because it somewhat aligns with maybe what your favorite quote is. But I, I can't for a moment find a quote that is exactly phrased like that. I, I can't. I've looked all over the internet. It doesn't exist. But maybe that doesn't fully convince you. Take a look at LeBron James in this clip. Uh, Taylor, you want to follow up? Yeah. Um, so you're holding the autobiography of Malcolm X along with Alex Haley. I don't know how far you are into the book, but what's your biggest takeaway so far? Um, I kind of just started a couple of days ago, um, but um, I've read and a lot of a lot of notes over the years. Um, it's my first time actually reading it from start to finish. Um, but just a very um, very smart man. That is the words of a man who has never read that book in his life. It sounds like a kid going up to the front of a class to do a book presentation on a book he hasn't read. All right, five minutes of Sparks notes uh, doesn't really cut it. I read notes over the years. Spark notes, LeBron James? I don't buy it. I do not buy that he read that book. And I know a liar when I see one because I have an English literature degree and I never read one of the goddamn books. I did an Eastern European literature class and they were fucking right over my head. I couldn't understand shit. I'm dumb as bricks. I do a test one time on a book and one of the questions was, hey, this is the main part of the book. And then it was, quote, which part of the book did it come? Part one, two, or three? And I was sitting there trying to flip a fucking coin to figure out the answer. At one point, I got so panicked that I would fail and then have to retake the class that I tried to shove a pencil up my nose to get a bloody nose so I could go to the bathroom so I could look it up on my phone. But instead, all I did is fuck up my nose for a couple days and the teacher yelled at me because she saw me and blood never came, which is fucked up because I always get bloody noses. Anyway, that's not the end of LeBron James's lie. This one I think is the most egregious. It's him talking about Kobe Bryant's historic 81-point game and how he saw it coming. I seen the whole game. I was at home watching the game, and you know, I said he was going before the game even started. When I seen, uh, I said he was probably going to score seventy tonight. Before the game even started, what? You just said that? It wasn't even like it's not like it was his last. It was just a game, just that game. He was just gonna. I don't. I don't know what made me say that. And my friends was with me, and they was like, "Okay." So when he got to like seventy, if I am with my friend and they look over to me and they randomly shout out, "That guy's gonna go se score seventy points," I'm not gonna reply. Okay, I'll reply. You're fucking dumb as bricks. Or take a little bet, get some action going. I, I was like, well, he might as well go for eighty now. So I mean. I'm a fan of the game, and to see that performance was unbelievable. He might, hey, he might as well go for 80. He might as well go for 90. Once I saw him hit 80, I was like, might as well go for 100. Fuck's Wilt Chamberlain going to do now, bitch? Okay, if this hasn't convinced you, I have definitive proof. I did a lot of digging because this clip's been traveling all over, but nobody's done the research that I've done to find out whether this is true or false. This is a clip from an interview in the finals a few years ago uh, where somebody asks him about a movie. I'll just play the clip. 
prepared. Serious conditions from uh, OTTV Greece. It is a question uh, not related to the game, but since uh, it has been a lot of publicity uh, yesterday and today about Godfather Part Two, which is the uh, the scene or or the moment or the phrase or the quote you like more from the movie? Oh, from the Godfather. Uh, um, it's it's too many different phrases uh, and too many different lines in that movie to just uh, categorize one. Um, Could be like just which is the one you had to. Which inspires you, <laughs> represents you more. I mean, each movie is nine hours long. I mean, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, there's so many. I don't know. I'll let you. That's a guilty laugh. That's a guilty. Listen to the laugh. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, there's so many. Babe, do I look fat today? <laughs> no, you don't. That's not believable. That's just not going to cut. It wouldn't cut it. It wouldn't cut it. How do I have proof that he lied? Well, there's another clip. Watch this. And this is kind of a unique group. You've got the young guys who may be generationally, you know, it's different than you. And some of the older guys that have been around the league are known as kind of big personality guys. So how do you, how do you mesh all of that where you can, you know, who do you think you might connect with most off the floor? Well, that's, why, that's how you figure it out. You know, that's how you figure it out. And that's the, that's the good thing about, uh, you know, being a leader of a franchise or a leader of a team or being a leader, period. Mm. You figure it out throughout the course of time. And it's not going to – it's not like instant oatmeal where you put it in the microwave a minute and a half, boom, you take it out, it's good. No, it's more okay. like the right. Godfather. You watch the Godfather and you see how Don Corleone throughout his whole entire life was just setting things up throughout his whole life to know that at the end of the day Michael was going to take over, take over the family and, the, and nothing was going to ever stop. So – it's a process. You understand that. How okay, I don't know if he threw this one out there to, to prove that he knows what happened in The Godfather, but he says there, as his main uh, analogy, weird, one involving oatmeal, the other involving uh, The Godfather, that, that Don Corleone tried to make sure Michael would become the Don one day. To which a genius commenter replied, D7BHW2, the Don never thought Michael would take over, though. This clip has 1.4 thousand views. I don't know how the hell I found this, but I did find the clip from The Godfather that exactly refutes what LeBron says. Check this out. I never, I never wanted this for you. And then he goes on to say, I don't want to play the rest so I don't get DMCA'd. I wanted you to become like a senator or governor and pull the strings from like where it actually matters rather than doing things behind the scenes, the illegal way, the shady way that takes a lot more work and effort. I wanted you to be, just basically be a corrupt governor. Uh, and, and unfortunately we can't do that and I'm about to die and you have to take over. He didn't even, we didn't want, that was the whole, that was the whole thing. That was the whole thing. Michael wasn't prepared and then he had to lean into the role and I, maybe he saw it a few years ago. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. The, LeBron James is crazy. He lies left and right. And here's the final clip. You own 2% of Liverpool. How does that come about? I read about the, the, the franchise and, and, and how uh, amazing it is. Um, you know, and I actually made a trip over, uh, you know, to Liverpool as well and, and, and see all the sites and, and the arena and, and everything. Um, so it was pretty, pretty unique. They don't play in an arena. They just don't play in an arena. They just... Yeah, Crouchy is actually a Liverpool legend. He used to play there. I don't know if you knew that. No, I knew that. I didn't get an opportunity to see him play when he was with the club, but I definitely knew, I, I definitely knew that. The current captain, uh, Jordan Henderson, just scored his first goal for England the other day. It was uh, amazing to see you fan of his. No, absolutely. And I saw and I, I saw a clip of that, too. Um, I didn't get an opportunity to actually see the game live, mm. but um, I saw that he was able to score one in the, in the, in the match the other day. And I thought that was uh, it's pretty unique, the fact that he would do that and also be with Liverpool <laughs> Football Club. I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about LeBron James, but the man consistently lies. Honestly, it might make him the GOAT, okay? He might, be, he might be the greatest of all time, and then he also is able to lie and get away with it. Reminds me of another GOAT that lied to me once, Hungrybox, one of the best Smash players. Because one time, a very cringily, I walked up to him at my first ever Smash tournament, and I was a subscriber to him. And he thanked me for my sub on stream, and then I, I saw him in person. I went, hey, Hungrybox, you know who I am? Which is a cringe thing. You should never do this. You should never do this. But I did this. I was cringe. And he, and he looks at me, and he goes, oh... And before he can even finish a sentence, I can tell he has no idea who I am. So I go, you don't remember. I subbed to you. And I started to walk away and he went, uh, no, no, I, I remember you because I have lots of subs. And you were one of the subs that I was thinking out when I was playing Super Smash Bros. And 
and I knew he was lying through his teeth, trying to make me feel all good. They're the same person. Anyway, how does it affect LeBron's legacy? Let me know. Subscribe down below. They thought I'd keep it some fun, happy, light news, and hope you have a good rest of your day. And World War III doesn't start. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs> Why does he lie? I don't get it. It's funny.